Hey friends, Chris here again. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. So today I bought a equipment trailer. It is a 21K equipment trailer. It's a little older, but I got a heck of a deal on it and it came with new tires. It came with new wheel bearings. Um, the guy put a new electrical harness on it because I guess somebody stole it or something like that. And the price was right. I could not pass up this deal. It was like I paid like pennies for this thing. I mean, it it was like really cheap. So I couldn't beat that. It's pretty much like scrap value. But this is a pretty good trailer. The the deck, um, it's in pretty good shape still. It, I mean, it's got some. It's definitely got some uh, sun abuse, but not much uh equipment abuse it doesn't look like so came with new tires new rims the guy put new wheel bearings on it it doesn't have brakes but he went through them and all the brakes are working besides one on the other side this is a tag axle in the front so i don't know if you can see um so the front axle is the tag axle on the two back uh, regular axles with brakes and it is homemade it was built at a, a college and um, it was certified and everything so it's pretty heavy duty it looks like these came off the semi or something the, the jack stands they are super heavy duty this bar is bent a little bit nothing nothing too big I had to lower this down so it won't hit the bed on my truck because I have a four-wheel drive truck and the bed sits up a little higher. And then I have some hooks I'm going to put on here because these don't look like they're quite rated for what they're supposed to be. So everything looks pretty good on the trailer. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. So uh, the reason why I got this trailer is I have a backhoe that I that I need to move around and it's pretty heavy so it's also backhoes are really long they're they're one of the um, harder machines to to move around because they're so long and they're really hard to load and they're really tipsy they're just worse machine to uh, yeah just to move around and that's kind of why backhoes are cheap and as the mini excavators are uh, really expensive because the mini excavators are just so easy to move around same with the skid steers they're really easy to move so i bought this trailer because i'm going to go pick up a d2 dozer as long as it's not uh totally clapped out um the guy said it runs and the pony motor runs he said everything works on it the clutches aren't stuck steering clutches aren't stuck so i told him uh i'm pretty much picking it up for scrap value so i told him I pick it up as long as the engine and the transmission is not full of water so uh we'll check it out and see how bad it is um he said the undercarriage is good it's got some berries growing on it so it's kind of hard to see in the pictures uh what the undercarriage is looking like but i'm gonna head up there and check that out that's actually gonna be up in oregon um so it's gonna be a heck of a drive and i will end up vlogging that and, and showing everybody the trip uh some parts of the trip at least and hopefully we'll go get that dozer and come back and we'll start making some d2 videos and i'm going to work on that dozer and get it going where hopefully it's reliable and um, the dozer has a winch and a forestry package on it so that's the main reason i'm going to pick it up uh, it's really hard to find um a dozer with the winch and the forestry package of one small enough that you can actually tow with a one ton truck. Um, most of the forestry dozers around here that are still alive are, are like D4s and up. And they're just, those are like 20, 30,000 pound machines. So you're gonna need a big a big 10, 10 wheeler or a, a low boy to move those. And I'm looking to get something smaller that I can move myself and it'll be a lot easier. And if I did have to pay somebody, hopefully they don't charge me as much because it's a uh, it's a lot cheaper, uh, not cheaper, but uh, it'll weigh a lot less, so it'll be a little easier to haul. I, 
you can just move it on a regular equipment trailer and you won't need a low boy so so this trailer one of the things that sold me on it uh when i was looking at it i got it off the marketplace on facebook is these ramps right here these ramps are pretty dang heavy duty i was looking at other 21k trailers and these ramps were nothing the ramps on those trailers were nothing like that these things are pretty heavy duty um i can't complain they they did a great job making these so it does look like it has three bars on this one this one only has two bars pretty funny but yeah the underneath has some rust um on it um at some point i want to see if i can tilt the trailer on its side and i got one of those uh sand blaster kits um for a pressure washer so my pressure washer is like 33 3400 psi so i'm thinking it'll work um i was looking up reviews on it and it seems like they work pretty good for removing rust but they do take a lot of sand so i don't know if if it's going to be worth it for me to buy a whole bunch of sand to take the rust off this thing but i'd really like to clean this thing up and get it going to where it looks real nice and stain the deck and uh when i bought it it didn't have reflective tape so i ran the harbor freight and slapped some reflective tape on it because you know you really want to have reflective tape on your trailers um that way nobody will run into you when you're pulling across the highway or something um, very important to have that reflective tape so i want to paint this um i'm probably going to take this sign off uh just because it looks like um this is just going to be my personal use trailer so i'm not going to be for hire so i'm going to put off a hire not for hire sticker up here and uh, probably remove this because it looks like it's some kind of a business um, from the distance, but I mean if you get close you can see it's uh, college the, the college that actually built this trailer so this thing is super heavy-duty um, I do notice if you hit some potholes this handle can fly out like this So that's not ideal. I'll have to put a bungee on that and These things will fly off and drag on the ground if you hit a big pothole or a big bump and one of the the hubs um the cap i have the cap for it he gave me the cap but for some reason it won't fit and it must be a different style hub it looks does look a little different i think it is a different style so i might have to modify it or find one um, the guy said it has dexter 7,000 pound axles on it so but i mean the college did a great job of making this thing i mean this thing is solid they put some some hooks down here and right there on the side so i'm really pleased with this trailer for uh dang near scrap value i'm gonna pay a little more in scrap value for it but um there's a lot of people moving out of california and uh they want to get rid of everything so they can get out of here because the cost of living and and fuel is just you know so expensive right now it's it's ridiculous it's it's a little cheaper now because it's winter time and it's uh election time so usually election time it drops down to a reasonable price but even at election time right now at the uh casino it's five bucks a gallon if you go to a regular gas station it's almost six bucks a gallon for diesel and uh yeah it's it's really hard to make it. It's sad to see. Um, I, I know a lot of machine shops, a, a lot of heavy equipment mechanics. Um, they're all leaving the state because it's just so expensive. And uh, the work's kind of drying up too. So, um, yeah, hopefully they can turn things around here shortly. Uh, I grew up in Northern California, so I really like this area. It's, it's so beautiful. I've, I've been all over the United States. And there's just nowhere like this place. It's just, there's all kinds of trees. You know, we have the redwoods. Or we have tan oaks, madrone. Um, we also, in the valley, we have our hardwoods as well. We don't have, like, red oak. But in the valleys, there's plenty of walnut trees. 
like valley oaks um so we have a little bit of everything here it's just the the politics can't figure out how to get everything together they just keep raising the taxes and they're just running all the good people out of the state so i hope uh, sooner or later they can turn it around and we can head another direction because this state does have a lot of potential but at the rate it's going it's uh it's gonna be real hard to get anything done if you can't find any mechanics or any machine shops pretty much gonna have to outsource everything now um all the machine shops are back east or they're in china so it's making it pretty tricky to get uh parts and just to get help in general uh it's really hard um a lot of the dealerships char are charging 200 bucks an hour so if you have a machine and it breaks down and you can't figure it out if you take it to the dealership it's about 200 bucks an hour so that is a lot of money so all right well i am gonna get into this trailer uh we don't have to do too much it was raining really hard so i couldn't get the other stuff on camera putting the tape on and uh, I had to lower this like I said earlier didn't get that on camera and I'm also using the action camera So hopefully you guys like the, the footage um, My other camera isn't waterproof. So All right, let's get into it The perch is uh, the, or the things that this clips on on my truck is uh, they're springs so it should hold them in place but All right, that's a lot stronger. Okay, we got those on. I'm gonna run the town and get some not for hire stickers because I don't have, um, my truck's too old and doesn't have DOT numbers. I'm pretty sure it's too old. I don't know, there's there's so many laws in this state. It's really hard to, to follow uh, everything and not break the law. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go get the not for hire sticker. We'll put it up there. I'd like to paint this first and take that sticker off. Um, but this rain is just going to be nonstop all night. So we got like a one hour break. Um, so I was able to get this video in. Good morning, YouTube. We are hooked up to the trailer and we are headed to go pick up that dozer up in Florence, Oregon. About an eight hour drive or so from where I'm at. So it's gonna take a minute to get there. Gas, diesel, starting fluid. We are going to be headed up to Florence, Oregon. We almost got some snow where I'm at. Mostly hail. But it's supposed to be pretty nice today, so hopefully it's a good drive. Alright, really appreciate everybody for tuning in. We'll see you shortly. Hey friends. This, uh, I can't keep a strap on these things for some reason. They just keep breaking. So I'm pulling out the heavy duty one. Hopefully if this doesn't work, I don't know uh, what's gonna work. I'm gonna have to pull out my chains. a mounting point right here to tie these down. So you gotta come all the way over here. <sighs> that should work. Alright, let's get back on the road.
favorite diesel, but this is the best place to get it on this spot. Truck only has a half a tank. But there's uh, not that many places to fuel up after this spot.
guy did not want any video, so I got a couple pictures. He let me do that. But we ended up loading it with an excavator. I couldn't get it to run. Uh, it was getting dark. We didn't have enough time. But the trailer's handling pretty good. Tires look pretty good. Got a balance pretty good. So the pony engine isn't sparking. The oil looked good and everything besides the engine had a little bit of water in the oil. The transmission looked good. The hydraulic fluid is empty. Um, but I think I can make this work. Looks like this final's leaking a little bit. And I think this winch is leaking a little bit somewhere. So it needs some work, but Undercarriage looks pretty good. Hour meter reads 1900 hours. I'm not sure how accurate that is. Okay, we are headed home. doing a little pre-trip inspection before we hit the border just make sure nothing's hanging off hubs are ice cold that's good Ice cold, ice cold. This trailer's doing great. It's a pretty good load for this trailer. Truck's looking pretty good. I don't see anything leaking. done with that pre-trip inspection I'm gonna show you guys the exhaust temps I've been running and transmission temperature pulling this load trucks been doing pretty good I've been trying to mostly stay under 800 degrees kind of got to drop some gears and some of these steep hills but truck's been doing pretty good the steep hills it wants to hit 900 so I try to keep it low as possible because that way my engine will last longer okay let's see
so right before this we ended up getting pulled over I uh, the gauge turned off and uh, yeah I was freaking out and I had to turn off the heater so the windows were pretty foggy I didn't see the 20 mile an hour sign and I guess I was doing like 40 and a cop pulled me over right as my alternator and my truck was about to die so I was kind of stressful so I pulled over and uh, told him what was going on and gratefully he let me go I really appreciate that and we ended up pulling into this O'Reilly's parking lot and I was just gonna crash out there and see if I get some new parts and then it seemed like it had voltage I started the truck and uh, wiggled the wires on the alternator and blasted the heater just to see what was going on and it seemed like it had plenty of voltage and I looked up online that uh, these trucks sometimes the voltage gauge can just go out so um, yeah I was hoping that was the case so we ended up getting back on the road hey friends we are back we almost got stuck on the road the alternator went out on the truck or the CPU I'm not sure yet um, we went I pulled into a rest stop the lights almost turned off so I was like shoot I think we're running out of power so I uh, pulled into the rest stop idled the truck for a second and I was thinking I was like oh the lift pump runs off the battery so I don't want to toast my injection pump so I killed it and then tried to start again it was completely dead so we I had two old batteries that I completely charged so I could start the dozer and I used those batteries I put them in the truck and then I tried starting it that wouldn't work so I added one more dead battery with jumper cables that didn't work so we cleaned all the terminals again and that didn't work and then we cleaned all the terminals again and then that worked we fired the truck up I unplugged the trailer brakes so there was no wasted electricity going to that we made sure the heater was off stereo was turned off I actually unplugged the amp cord and we had to go 15 miles with some very old batteries that only have 600 cranking amps each so we had two of them so we made it to O'Reilly's parking lot and it's about 3 a.m. so hopefully when they open they can find me an alternator and I can get this figured out all right we'll see you on the next scene